Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was fielding questions from the members of the public this morning during a cringeworthy LBC interview in which he made this soul-searching admission. All the, the areas that I've set out, uh, you know, when it comes to the NHS, that's the place where we've not made as much progress as I would have liked. Well, and, you've made no progress. Uh, yeah, no, the waiting list today is, is higher than it was when I took office. Mm. So, while we're on the subject of the Prime Minister's biggest failures, why don't I just rattle off a few more, OK? So there's been a record start to 2024, with over 5,400 migrants arriving on small boats so far this year. That's 43% up from the same time last year. The UK economy fell into a recession at the end of 2023, despite the much-lauded national insurance tax cuts. Stealth taxes mean Brits have less and less in their pay packets, in the round. Meanwhile, Rishi Sunak's been busy banning vapes and overhauling the education system by you know, doing some really fruity stuff with A-levels. So, with a crumbling NHS and ever-worsening small boats crisis, and that's before we've got started on legal immigration, isn't it? A tanking economy. Is Rishi Sunak the worst Prime Minister we've ever had? Let me know your thoughts. GBviews at gbnews.com, at gbnews on Twitter. Go and vote in our poll. The results to follow shortly. Doing battle on this now are the Tory MP, soon to be Sir Philip Davies, and the former Labour Minister, Bill Rammel. Bill, is Rishi Sunak the worst Prime Minister we've ever had, even worse than Tony Blair? Well, I think Tony Blair is one of the best Prime Ministers we've ever had. But, uh, you know, I never thought I'd say this after the lies of Boris Johnson and Liz Truss's dogmatism wrecking the economy. But I actually think he is the worst Prime Minister uh, we've ever had. Uh, you know, he crafted five pledges which he thought were easy to deliver. He's failing on four out of five of them. The National Health Service is an abject disgrace. 400,000 people are waiting lists more than when he took office as Prime Minister. The average wait time is 18 months compared to 18 weeks when Labour left office. And it's always someone else's fault. It strikes in the NHS. It's you. I mean, they have had an impact. To be, to be fair, yeah, junior it, doctors are to blame for the high level of the current waiting list in a, in a, in well, a, in you, a, in a large respect. The, if you look at the detailed reports, that's worth about 200,000 of the extra 400,000 that are on waiting lists since Sunak took yeah. office. But his whole style, his own whole modus operandi is it's someone else's fault. And whenever he's challenged, right. he's tetchy, petulant, and entitled, which right. is what he is. OK. Uh, Philip, I understand that you're quite exercised uh, about this. Uh, I think one of the main issues that a lot of people have with Rishi Sunak is he just appears to be incredibly bad at politics. Well, whether he is or isn't, it's for other people to judge. Well, that doesn't make him a bad prime minister. And I don't actually believe that either you or Bill believe all that tripe that you came out with uh, just a few minutes ago, to be perfectly honest. I mean, Rishi Sunak inherited, probably had the worst inheritance of any new prime minister since Winston Churchill, to be perfectly honest. We'd had a, a tarnished brand. We were 35 points down in the opinion polls. We had economic headwinds. We got the uh, all the immigration problems that had been left behind by his predecessors. Uh, we'd got the, the, the impact of the COVID lockdowns. And of course, that's the reason why the waiting lists are so high, which Bill spectacularly fails to mention, something that the Labour Party wanted to have longer and deeper lockdowns mm. for. We should have had longer and longer waiting lists as a consequence but What's he of. done about any of those things, Philip, though? Well, that's he's done the thing, about all of them. So, for, so, for example, let's, let, let's, take the, let's take the one by one. Immigration, which is the biggest, which is the biggest issue. He's passed a bill which is going to complete its passage through the House of Lords next week, which on the front of the bill makes clear it does not comply with the European Convention of Human Rights. I don't think anyone could have expected a prime minister to do anything tougher than pass a bill which actually doesn't comply with the European Convention of Human Rights, but they want to do it anyway. He's changed the rules on immigration for legal immigration to stop dependence of students coming into uh, the country to increase the amount that okay. people have to earn. In fact, funnily enough, I got a letter from Bradford University, my local university, last week complaining that they were in financial difficulties because the immigration rules had been clamped down on so stringently. Right. That was the reason that they that they gave. He's ma managed to uh, start the, the cutting taxes. I mean, obviously, we had to get inflation down. Okay. And when you get inflation down, that has impact on economic growth. But he's got inflation down. He's got taxes down. All he's right. put back. I'll come back to you, Philip. I'll come back to you, Philip. Bill, Bill, Bill Philip, Philip's, Philip's made a strong case there that Rishi Sunak is not, in fact, the worst prime minister we've ever had. Well, I, I think if you look at the evidence, uh, he is. 
we've got the highest tax but you know you talk about tax cuts philip we've got the highest tax burden since you are the a former labor world. minister bill just bear that in mind yeah absolutely and we've got the highest tax burden since Bill, the Bill, Second World War I, I, under this Tory just... government. They failed spectacularly on delivering drug growth. And I think he is the worst prime minister ever. But you know what? I think he's a symptom rather than a cause. He presented himself as the unity candidate who would bring stability and integrity back to government. But the Tory party is so riven by divisions mm. and factions and Sunak wallows around in the middle and he's got no sense of leadership because underpinning it all, he gives me no sense that he's got a real set of right. beliefs and values that drives his conduct in government. Yeah, all right, OK, look, Philip, the opinion polls would suggest that he is one of the worst prime ministers we've ever had. No, I, I disagree. If you look right. at the situation he inherited and where we are now, we're a lot better off in the opinion polls than where we, when we were when he when he took over. However, no, no, bad no, no, you're not. No, you're not. It's worse than when Liz Truss was prime minister. You had your you, you had your say, and uh, and and, and uh, our brand was massively tarnished at the time. I mean, it, it's, you can't just come in and have a new shop manager after Gerald Ratner makes a speech, and all of a sudden that 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 reputation changes. He, he inherited a mess. But Bill's treating this as if he's just landed on earth in 2022 we thought about the tax burden the tax burden's high bill to pay for the lockdown that you were all in favor of to pay mm. for people to sit at home and do nothing for two years you were all in favor of that i wasn't i voted against that how did you think that was going to be paid for it has to be paid for by higher taxes you seem to want to have the lockdown and well, how are you going to pay for it how yeah and look just hey bill <laughs> Bill, you're saying that it's always everybody else's fault with Rishi Sunak, but you know what? Keir Starmer's getting his excuses in early. Ten years of renewal, you'll say you need in order for you to do anything. I mean, that's somebody else's fault all the time, isn't it, there? It is going to take ten years to sort out the chaos we're going to inherit. Because I tell you what, what drives the highest tax burden since the Second World well, how War Rishi do is, it the in anemic, oh, it, is the anemic growth that we've had under this 14 years of this Conservative government. How but much money right, was left Bill. after the last Labour government, Bill? Uh, we had the lowest debt to GDP ratio mm. amongst the G7 countries. We had a world banking crisis that we had to grapple with. The Tories had no different policies to deal with that right. than we did. But, you know, Sunak, had, you talk, Philip, about Sunak having inherited chaos from Boris Johnson and Liz Truss. And I agree with you. He had a chance to define himself against his two predecessors, and he chose not to. He refused so to even vote for the sanctions on Boris Johnson, and he's not repudiated Liz Truss. You're saying that Rishi should have sorted out all these problems after lockdown and in 18 months, but Labour's going to need 10 years to do it. I mean, what a load of old tripe, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you're making this up as you're going along, to be perfectly honest, Bill. Uh, you, you, you absolutely know that you've got no solutions to the problems that the country's facing. You don't even want to tackle immigration. You're going to just cave into the unions. That's your going to be a way of dealing with waiting. They just cave into 40% pay demands and all the rest of it. It's going to well, be absolute chaos. And nobody likes Keir Starmer, not even on the Labour benches do they like Keir Starmer. And the voters certainly don't. So I'd be concentrating on getting your own house in order with Angela Rayner and all the rest of it. Get your own house in order before you start having a go at what Rishi Sunak's done because he's actually well, done Philip, a really Nobody likes Keir Starmer, nobody likes point. the Labour Party, and that's why we're 20% ahead in the polls. Um, and, you know, Rishi Sunak is not it's the not answer to Starmer. this country's problems. Yeah, but, uh, Philip, I've got to pick you up on that then. You've just said it's not for Keir Starmer. I mean, it's because of Rishi Sunak, isn't it? No, it's not. You're treating it, uh, Patrick, as if Rishi Sunak inherited a 20-point lead in the polls and he's burned through it. He inherited a 35-point deficit in the polls mm. with a tarnished brand and right. massive headwinds. He didn't arrive in that job because everything was going well. He arrived in the job because everything was going I badly. get it, but, well, I get it. I, look, I, I, do, look, I appreciate it. Where's, where's the vision, though? You know. Anyway, right, uh, look, both of you, thank you very much. Thank you. That's exactly what we're after, so great stuff. Right, who do you agree with, all right, as he claims that the NHS waiting lists are the biggest failure yet? Is Richie Sunak the worst prime minister we've ever had? Becky says, Sunak inherited such a bad situation after trust. It's unfair to judge him after a short period of time. Fair enough. Mary says, he's certainly the most ineffective, but the worst is undoubtedly Blair. Don't don't let Bill hear you say that. Ken says, Patrick, 
Did you forget how bad Liz Truss was? Short memories. No, although, and hear me out on this, hear me out on this. There is the, the school of thought, I'm not saying this is my school of thought, the school of thought that says that Liz Truss will be proved right with the fullness of time. At least there was a vision there, although that vision has, um, well, blown a hole in my mortgage, but anyway. 60% of you agree that Rishi Sunak is the worst prime minister ever. 40% of you say he is not. Right.